Okay. Okay. Do you see the screen now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is a very recent work uh, that I've been doing. Uh, so, some part was also done with a collaboration with the Tincho. Uh, and this is the result of uh, also of a work that we've done for the ETC Classic blockchain uh, to try to help them uh, get a, a higher security against double spend attacks. So uh, what I'm will show you today it's uh, just uh, gone out of the you know the the, the kitchen the, the the cooking uh but i i think that it's important to share because because it it can help us when we present rsk to show that we have a plan for a much stronger uh security in the merge mining side so that that's why that even if this has not been implemented in rsk uh, it will take a month if we agree to implement this. Uh, it's important for me for to to defend RSK against some some sort of uh, uh, attacks sometime. So this is uh, called the strong fork aware merge mining in RSK, uh, and it is brought to you by the re recently created research and innovation team powered by IOB Labs. Okay, so let's start. So what's the motivation behind this? Okay, RSK has a stable 30%. Now it's, I think it's more than 30%, but let, uh, the, the couple of times I checked in this week, it was about 30% uh, of Bitcoin mining hash rate, uh, BMH. Um, that's, uh, uh, that means that if we didn't have Armadillo monitoring uh, the forks, then approximately 20% of Bitcoin mining hash rate or 66 percent of the rsk mining hash rate could practically revert rsk right uh armadillo help us because it allows us to detect these reversal attempts but armadillo it's not a tool that is autonomous or automatic at this point in time so first it is it is programmed to prepare to to create alerts when long reorganizations occur, let's say more than 10 hours, more than 16 hours of block data. And at the current state, it involves some human intervention. So the mining team is working towards making some alerts uh, automatic. Uh, for instance, the ones that affect the HSMs, the federation nodes. But uh, but for all the remaining participants of the ecosystem, this this requires human intervention. So we, we would need to publish somewhere that an, an attack is ongoing, and then people should react to that. And even if that could occur, there are certain attacks that Armadillo currently cannot protect from. For instance, uh, well, it cannot protect us from shorter reorganization attacks. Okay, so let's say that an exchange waits uh, just one hour. Uh, that uh, that uh, that is uh, like 20, uh, 20, No, it's more like 120, 120 blocks. Then, uh, then Armadillo, I think it won't be fast enough to to notify anyone about the, the attack. This is the current status of merge mining. Uh, in Bitcoin, uh, the mining in Bitcoin and merge mining in RSK. So there are a few very, very big pools. Uh, the ones that are high, uh, highlight the, that have a, a green are the ones that are uh, merge mining in RSK. The ones that are in yellow are the ones that have, that are in a certain position of power to revert RSK if they collude. So, for instance, if uh, BTC com colludes with the FT pool, then it's it could be game over. Uh, or if F2 pool colludes, let's say, with the Huobi pool, then also we will be in, in a in a very in in a, in a in trouble. Okay. So the idea is how can we improve the current situation, even if we cannot reach immediately more than this 30% or 40% of Bitcoin hash rate. 
So what do we want to achieve? Uh, what I have said, we want higher protection from blockchain organizations no. using the non-merged mine hash rate. Uh, we want to reduce the attacker's ability to manipulate block timestamps and difficulty, like trying to decrease difficulty or increase difficulty just to, to perform some sort of uh, isolation attacks or uh, these kinds of attacks. And we want also to have better visibility of what are the forks and the short short uh, size forks that are occurring in the network. And eventually we want this to be a local decision. We don't want to have an external system like Armadillo that is like uh, monitoring um, everything that uh, that's happening. But what if every single node, economic node could configure their own alarms and we did, they didn't have to relay on external parties uh, doing some some specific uh, detections. And this is very important because uh, it really uh, combines with the decentralized node, with the philosophy of the decentralized node. So what do we need to, to achieve these goals? So now these are just titles. I, I will try to explain more about a few of them. Uh, we have, th these are like uh, six changes, six consensus changes which are pretty simple, each one, but when you combine them, you have this greater security. And uh, I think that uh, not not today, but in a, in a further, in, a, in the next session, I could try to show you how one can prove that we have a, a higher security. I'm working on, 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 on a model for that uh, because the, the current model, which is based on two properties, is called the Bitcoin backbone model, which is based on the two properties, called persistence and liveness, it doesn't fit a merge mining chain. So it's not, it does not fit well or uh, cannot be applied to a merge mining side chain. So we need specific new definitions, which I'm working on. So these are the six changes we need to perform and I will explain uh, uh, most of them. The important thing is that each one of these changes could be implemented uh, separately and it would also improve the security of RSK. Even if they are not together, each one of them separately uh, improves the security. So let's let's uh, the, talk about the most important change. So in the current situation, we have some amount of blocks that are merged mine. In this diagram, these are the orange blocks, and this is the this what I'm showing here is the Bitcoin blockchain. And we have certain amount of hash rate that currently is more than the uh, the merge mine hash rate. That's why in this graph it's, it shows like a box, a bigger box of yellow uh, blocks uh, that are coming after the orange blocks, which have the merge mining tag, uh, but they do not, they don't have any tag. They are not merge mining with RSK, so they do not have the RSK uh, block tag. So what I notice about this is why are we uh, not using this additional hash rate to confirm the yellow block, the yellow ball, uh, the yellow boxes, the yellow blocks. Okay, because they are not confirming anything else. They are not confirming attackers' blocks. So literally, they are there for us to uh, to take. Okay, so that's why I'm, I, I'm uh, calling this claiming the unclaimed hash rate. So all the hash rate that is, has not been claimed by any uh, RSK fork all the hash rate that do not have the uh, the RSK tag, then we can claim that hash rate for our own security, okay? So this is this is what happens. Uh, we set a specific uh, difficulty for this block, which it's uh, compared to an RSK block, it's about between 20 and 40 times more because of the the difference in, in the merge mining engagement and also because one Bitcoin block it's uh, it, uh, approximately equivalent to 20 RSK block in terms of time, the, the, the time intervals, like 30 seconds against 10 minutes. So let's say that this each one of these yellow blocks um, transfers to the cumulative difficulty 30 times the original RSK block. So e each RSK block transfers one unit and then the yellow transfers 30 units. Okay, so I will call these Bitcoin blocks that, uh, that are contributing to RSK, I will ca call them heavy blocks because they contribute a lot more cumulative difficulty than the normal uh, 
uh, RSK blocks. And we will, I will differentiate between the orange blocks we have, we'll, we, which are the ones that have the merge mining tag. These are heavy blocks and the yellow ones will be heavy block confirmations, okay? These are the ones that do not have the merge mining tag. And the interesting thing is uh, that it's as easy to prove that a block does not have the, mine, the merge mining tag as it is to prove that it has the merge mining tag. Okay, so essentially it's the same proof. Uh, the only difference is that we show that the tag is not there. Okay, so it's the same type of merge mining proof now, but now we, we just prove that the tail of the Coinbase does not have any tag. So what happens with this unclaimed hash rate, these heavy block confirmations under attack? So in this graph, I try to show how the the unclaimed hash rate splits between two forks. So let's say that the orange, it's a fork, fork A of the Airscape blockchain. Okay, so here I'm showing the Bitcoin blockchain, but I'm referring to a, uh, an existing fork in the Airscape blockchain, okay? So some of these blocks, the, the orange blocks, are the ones that are merged mined with fork A, and the green ones are the ones that are merged mined with fork B. So the yellow ones will be split between these two forks. The first one, which we show in yellow with uh, orange borders, it's confirming uh, a fork A uh, hash rate, a fork A uh, block, while the the second one that appears that it's yellow, but with green borders, it's confirming the hash rate of the fork B. Okay, so what happens during attack is that this unclaimed hash rate splits between the two, the two forks. So this is very important. If there is no, if there is no attack, we get a hundred percent of Bitcoin difficulty transfers to RSK. So we can we can fairly say that RSK has a hundred percent of Bitcoin security. Even more, if since we are merge mining with Bitcoin Cash, if there is no ongoing attack, we will have more hash rate combined than Bitcoin. We can say fairly and honestly that we have, let's say, 110% or 105% of the Bitcoin hash rate, okay? But the problem is what happens during attack. So that is another problem. How can we use this information to detect an attack and react to an attack? So that if we are under attack, we can do, some, do something that is safe. So first, one little problem, okay, that I had to deal with during this research, uh, which is the problem of selfish mining, that it, it always pops again and again and again uh, in, in Nakamoto consensus. So we, we've said that the, the, this heavy blocks confirmation are the value to the the difficulty is 30 times the normal block. So an attacker can do this. He's mining normal RSK blocks. This is a, we will call this attacker a selfish miner, but suddenly he managed to mine a block, which is also a Bitcoin block. So it's an RSK block, but an RSK block with Bitcoin difficulty. And this, all, this will also be included probably in the Bitcoin blockchain. So I'm showing this as a yellow, as a violet uh, block, the first violet block uh, of the selfish miner. But from that point on, the selfish miner knows that every heavy block confirmation will be confirming his own private uh, fork. So he decides to keep mining RSK blocks, but this time in private, because he knows that anything any confirmation block that will happen on Bitcoin will only increase the cumulative difficulty of his own private uh, blockchain. So he may mine 10, 20 because he has this assurance that the whole Bitcoin blockchain is working in his favor and not in the honest miners uh, fork. Okay, so uh, suddenly when the honest miners create a Bitcoin, an RSK Bitcoin block, I will call RSK Bitcoin block or Bitcoin RSK block to the blocks, to the RSK blocks that also have Bitcoin difficulty and so can be included in the Bitcoin blockchain as, as the Bitcoin header, okay? 
So that, that's, uh, I'm calling them RSK Bitcoin block. Uh, so when the honest miners find a, a RSK Bitcoin block, a heavy block, then the attackers knows that the heavy block confirmation will no longer be confirming his own private branch. So he will uh, show the, his branch, which has it has more cumulative difficulty to the network. And so he will win and he will revert the uh, the honest branch, okay, the honest fork. So we want to prevent this. So to prevent this, we have two possibilities. Uh, I will just mention this, but I I, pref I would prefer uh, this is this puts a, a little more complication in the protocol. One is that uh, the the difficulty that heavy blocks uh, transfer they transfer to not the immediate block, not the current block, but to a checkpoint which is, let's say, 60 blocks in the past, six, uh, 64 blocks in the past, sorry. So now, um, if there is a selfish mining attempt and a, a heavy block confirmation, a non-merge mine blocks, which is the uh, big um, uh, uh, light yellow block he show here, it can be referenced by both blockchain, both by the uh, honest chain Honest fork and by the selfish miner fork. Okay, so this basically deters the selfish mining attack. But I think we can do simpler than this, which is to make the Bitcoin RSK blocks more valuable to the cumulative difficulty and be able to include them as uncles. Okay, so we do the same we do with uh, with RSK blocks that we have blocks and uncles. We can do exactly the same with the Bitcoin blocks. We can have uncles, which are basically blocks that have a parent in the honest chain, but uh, uh, they do not, they are not part. So um, the reason to increase the value of these Bitcoin RSK heavy blocks is that miners should highly prefer RSK Bitcoin blocks or uh, Bitcoin RSK blocks to be able to include uh, heavy block confirmation. And also, an attacker must pay a high cost to hide the Bitcoin RSK block. And this is because uh, in certain situations, uh, an attacker may be willing to sacrifice the Bitcoin reward uh, because he's paid by the mining pool in any way, because he's being paid by shares. For instance, in the Stratum protocol, Stratum B2 protocol, it lets, uh, this protocol lets miners choose their own merge mine chains. They let miners choose their, their own, their, their own uh, fork they want to mine. So if they have this freedom, they can, they can use that to try to attack. So these are the two reasons why uh, the, the Bitcoin RSK heavy block should have a higher value than just one unit. So if we solve this equation, and if we want to split the RSK blocks between pure RSK blocks, we do not reach Bitcoin difficulty and Bitcoin RSK blocks, we have Bitcoin difficulty, and we try to solve this, we came up with very you know, simple numbers. So if we, what we want to keep is the idea that the RSK blockchain cumulative difficulty is real. So we are not lying about cumulative difficulty. We want to, we want to distribute differently the weights of uh, uh, Bitcoin RSK blocks and RSK blocks. So if we solve it, we uh, get to a point where uh, every uh, RSK block should have half of the difficulty it had, to, it had before. So should contribute 50% of the difficulty contributed before. And every Bitcoin RSK block uh, contributes 10 times that, okay? So if we do that, then we are sure that uh, the cumulative difficulty of a blockchain having a mixture of RSK blocks and Bitcoin RSK blocks has the same cumulative difficulty, okay? So to, to, to say in other words, approximately 19 of the blocks will be only RSK blocks and one in 20 will be a Bitcoin, uh, an RSK block with Bitcoin difficulty. And that is the one that we are going to give a little bit more uh, dif difficulty transferring to the cumulative difficulty. Oh, 
it's kind of uh, difficult to explain. So now um, uh, the selfing binding does not work because we are allowing these uh, heavy blocks to be included as uncles. So if the self miner attempts to keep this block private, he can't because it's published on the Bitcoin blockchain. And so uh, a honest miner can say, okay, you have a, a block there, I will reference it and I will be awarded 10 uh, units of difficulty to the cumulative difficulty. And uh, and so, you know, you, you the attacker gains nothing by keeping mining in private. Um, I don't know how it sounds in the in the other side of the internet, but from what I'm explaining, it sounds quite difficult to explain. Uh, I hope that uh, you understand better better than I can explain it. But uh, I will, <coughs> this war I, is not easy, Sergio. I know. Okay, <laughs> so next time I will try to find better uh, better uh, comparisons. So these are the changes in consensus that we have to apply. So I will just read them. Uh, are they, they are pretty simple. So first, the Bitcoin merge mining block timestamp must be, must be close to the RSK block timestamp. Okay, plus, minus, plus uh, uh, 10 minutes. So we are linking the timestamps of the uh, merge mine, the header of the Bitcoin that is being merge mined to the RSK, black merge, uh, RSK header. And this is pretty obvious, like by doing so, we are uh, preventing the attacker from uh, playing with the timestamp. So now, if you want to you know, backdate blocks, you can't because you have to backdate Bitcoin blocks also. So how are you going to backdate Bitcoin blocks? You are going to lose the Bitcoin reward. So now backdating blocks after a confirmation gets a lot harder. Uh, and then we have to reference these, uh, these uh, non-merge mine blocks uh, I propose that we create a special field in the block header called no merge mine blocks, where it's similar to uncles, but we refer to Bitcoin blocks. And at the same time, each uh, non merge mine block timestamp might be close to R RSK block timestamp we refer to it, minus uh, plus 10 minutes. Uh, then uh, Bitcoin RSK uncle heavy block or uncle heavy block confirmation for a certain uh, checkpoint uh, can only be included uh, before uh, for a certain period of blocks. So this is the same we do with uncles. We don't let uncles be included, you know, a thousand blocks later. We just set a maximum amount of time that we will allow the inclusion of these Bitcoin uncles, the heavy block confirmation uncles. Of course, heavy block headers cannot be repeated. You cannot, as, uh, the same as you cannot include an uncle twice, uh, you should not be able to include a heavy block header uh, confirmation twice. Uh, okay, then we have the change of contribution of, uh, of RSK blocks. And then we will change the, uh, the amount of difficulty that each block transfers to the uh, common difficulty, which is basically, it has to do with the previous two changes, but we will try to penalize any attempt to play with the timestamps. And I will show you how. So each, if I, if a I, if I RSK difficulty is, let's say 10, uh, we will apply um, a multiplicator uh, ratio between zero and one, which will tell how much of this difficulty will be transferred to the cumulative difficulty. Sometimes it will be one and sometimes it will be zero. Also, we ask that, that the RSK best chain ends in the current time. We will now allow, this is something very easy that improves Nakamoto consensus, and I don't know why uh, other blockchains are not using this. This is uh, protects from so many attacks. So basically, if you have a best chain, then it, it better ends in the current time. I will not accept the best chains that has ended, let's say, four days ago, and you don't have the blocks that connects this best, this supposedly best chain because it has more cumulative uh, difficulty, but it is not connected to the current time. Okay, so this is important also, and we have some other optional non-consensus changes. I just skip. Okay, this is the difficulty transfer function that I, I talked about, and this is this is what gets 
what gives the system security against trying to play with timestamps. So currently, every block contributes 100% of this, its difficulty to the cumulative difficulty. So we will change that. We will contribute an amount that is uh, proportional to the standard deviation of the timestamps uh, over the expected standard deviation. And then in, in case of an exponential distribution, the expected uh, this, uh, the expected um, standard deviation is the mean. So in this equation, A is the mean, and it's also the expected standard deviation, okay? So R, which is this coefficient, this factor that would alter how the uh, difficulty is transferred to the cumulative difficulty, uh, will be close to one when bitcoins are uh, when when blocks are produced uh, uniformly distributed, which is not the realistic case. It's not perfect. They are not perfectly uniform distributed, of course, but it will be uh, close to one uh, with this definition when they are, and when bitcoin when blocks come some jitter, uh, this this value will be below one. Okay. What we can be sure is that if you try to uh, revert the blockchain after a day and you have to leave a, an enormous gap of timestamp, let's say I do not mine for a day and then I start mining, then that gap will make all the following blocks contribute almost zero to the cumulative difficulty. So this is just a penalization system for playing with the timestamp. Okay, there are in the literature, there are some other types of penalization system. For instance, uh, Pilguar or Horizon, they have their own penalization system, which they, what they do is they add more blocks of confirmation. Like, but I, this is much, much stronger. So how are we going to protect now that we have all the pieces from attacks with two things? First, we have to define a safe mode for the node to work. A safe mode is something that was invented by Bitcoin in, in 2000, by, by Satoshi. And which, what it does is in case of an attack, it puts the node in a kind of a dormant mode where it keeps following the best chain. It keeps doing the same, uh, the same housekeeping, but it will not confirm transaction. It will shut down the RPC methods, the RPC interface that allows you to confirm a transaction. So if you have a wallet connected to a full node, it just won't confirm any transaction. So because uh, nodes will be able to sense the Bitcoin hash rate, they can sense if they there is a portion of the Bitcoin hash rate that is not part of the honest chain because they have the merge mine blocks and the, conf the and the heavy blocks confirmation. Okay, so I propose a threshold of 70%. So if the hash rate of the, if the Bitcoin hash rate or the total SHA-2056 hash rate perceived by the node goes below 70%, then the node will enter this safe mode for a certain time. And it can also enter safe mode uh, if the block density is too high. And this is also to prevent uh, isolation attacks. And this is this is what we can do locally in each node. And what we can do globally, it's use the fork alert broadcast system such as Armadillo, which can be can have less amount of false positives, okay? Because it has more information. Because it it's looking at the Bitcoin blockchain, it can not only see the hash rate that is contributing to the honest chain, but it can also see the hash rate that is not contributing to the honest chain. So it has a little more information. And the second thing we have to do is, I, what I talked to you before, is the penalization of time, time gaps. Okay, that this is done by modifying the cumulative difficult, the transfer function of the difficulty. So what we've created, it's a merge mining security hierarchy that it's uh, that has more security than before. Before we had, you know, in the bottom like time stamping. Time stamping does not work for merge mining because there is no hash rate scarcity, right? So I can create many timestamps for different uh, uh, forks, 
and and I'm paying very little for that, okay? Because nobody's preventing me to create this this many time sum time sum for the same for different forks. With classical merge mining, I also I have only one space in the Coinbase to create a time stamp. Okay, and so all are competing for that space. Well, in fork aware smart mining, we are, you know, using the whole uh, hash rate of the whole Bitcoin blockchain. And of course, we can have these two variants of fork aware merge mining where I can detect locally or I can detect globally and broadcast this information to all nodes, or I can do both. So this is how the, the architecture of, uh, of um, uh, fork aware mesh mining. So the only, there are two differences. First, if the merge miner can connect to a Bitcoin node, which I assume would be the, the norm, then the Bitcoin node will forward the Bitcoin headers to the year scaleful node of the merge mining. And then all the blocks will have this, uh, this heavy blocks confirmation embedded in the header. If that not happens, so if merge miners are not willing to connect to a Bitcoin node, which they already have, right? Because they are merge mine, they, they already have a Bitcoin node running. But if for any reason they are not willing to connect, they can receive this information from the Armadillo monitor because the Armadillo monitor is, uh, is um, uh, following the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin node. So we could, we could transfer this information directly through the peer-to-peer -peer network until all merge miners are connected to a Bitcoin node. And any full node, any economic actor of the, of the network will have two things inside the node. A Bitcoin hash rate estimator, which basically allows the node to tell if there was a decrease on the hash rate that is uh, working towards the honest chain and the fault detector, a local fault detector, which establish some rules that could be configured locally, depending on the needs of the economic actor. For instance, if the exchange was willing to, to wait only one hour, it will configure the fault detector for, to get uh, enter safe node uh, on, on, on very short uh, forks or long forks, or that, that's completely a local policy. So here I will show you very quickly uh, what are what attacks are we will are trying to deter and how? Okay, so the attacks are revert after confirmation, which is the uh, I think this uh, the the stealth one because we the attacker lets the blockchain you know have its normal working it does not interfere in anything, uh, but once the exchange does the first confirmation or the or the bridge any economic actor, then it, try, it tries to revert the blockchain as, as, uh, as quickly as possible. And the other, which is revert during confirmation, is where the attacker tries to perform the attack at the same time, okay? Uh, and, and we hope that, I mean, it's, it, it's what finally happens, but we hope that the uh, fault detection system will see this happening. And we want, all variants of these attacks to be deterred, like with or without a victim node insulation, with hidden attackers, with visible attackers, all kinds of combination. So this is the first attack that we are going to analyze. It's a, uh, we have an attacker that has almost the same hash rate as the honest chain, let's say 1% more, but here I, I just uh, use 25% and 25%, but he's trying to hide himself, so he's not, uh, he's not, he's withholding every Bitcoin error escape block. So each time he managed to create an error escape block, which is as, as the same time a Bitcoin block, instead of publishing this block to the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, he will withhold it and he will lose the Bitcoin reward. Trying to, by this, by doing this, trying to uh, go uh, uh, he, uh, steal from the RSK network. So this attack first, it fails to get enough cumulative work. So in the, I show you some numbers here, but in this setting, which is about 25, hour, uh, 25 hours a day, the honest chain got 108 difficulty units when a unit is the, it's the RSK difficulty, while the attacker got only 18 units. Like it's
it's very, very far away of, 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 of getting, of reversing the honest chain. Why he got so few uh, units of difficulty? Because the RSK Bitcoin blocks are the ones that contribute a lot to the difficulty. And also because he lost the Bitcoin rewards, he has a net, you know, a net uh, revenue uh, decrease of $5 million because he was not able to claim the Bitcoin rewards. So this attack, it's completely uh, unrealistic for the attacker. Now we are going to try to see the same happening, but for an attacker that has double the hash rate as the honest chain. So first, the, the first thing that happens is that the honest node will detect this because they will detect that uh, the, the there is a huge amount of Bitcoin hash rate that is missing. Okay, so they they first of thing they happen is that they enter safe mode, but even if they they didn't enter safe mode, what happens that is that the attacker still cannot uh, get uh, enough uh, cumulative difficulty, even if it has twice the hash rate of the on a chain, he gets half of the cumulative difficulty and he loses seven point five million dollars on unclaimed Bitcoin rewards. Okay. So the moral of this is that trying to hide is not an option. Trying to hide by not uh, being visible in Bitcoin is not an option. And this is the uh, uh, the other attack where the attacker is visible. Okay, so this is uh, uh, revert during uh, confirmation, but the attacker has say, okay, I will be visible. I will mine Bitcoin blocks but I will hide RSK blocks, okay? So what happens is that even if the attacker has much higher rate, hash rate than the honest chain, the honest chain can sense this because he sends a decrease in the, in the hash rate, in the Bitcoin hash rate, uh, and then he enters safe mode. And when he enters safe mode, the first payment confirmation just doesn't happen. So there is something like I didn't mention before, but uh, I didn't mention what what uh, what what are the red the red block here. The blo the red block here is the payment to a victim. The victim is an exchange, and the first payment confirmation is the point where the exchange accepts this deposit and is willing to trade the 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 RSK the RSK Bitcoin for some other tokens. Let's say for bitcoins, and and let the 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 attacker take the take those bitcoins away from the exchange. Okay, so that between the red block and the first payment confirmation, the exchange will wait a, a hundred uh, hundreds of blocks. Let's say twenty five hours, but it's the same. So what what will happen is that because the lack of uh, the the the, log, the node senses the missing bitcoin hash rate, then he enters safe mode, and because he enters safe mode, the first payment confirmation never occurs. In fact the exchange will never confirm the payment confirmation during attack. It will wait until the node senses that the hash rate has returned to its normal uh, value. And, and only then, and only when one of the two forks has been established, it will confirm the transactions. So, so the double spend never happens because the first, the first confirmation, the first spend never happens. Okay, there, is all, there, there will only be one spend. Never two spends, and and this this other attack is what I told you before. What what is if the attacker tries to do a reverse after confirmation? So, since the attacker could not perform a double spend, then what the attacker can do is okay. Let's wait until the first spend is really uh, finalized, and then let's start the attack. Okay. So we assume that the in this case the exchange waits twenty four hours. Uh, and then the attacker at this point starts the attack. And because this huge gap in timestamps that the attacker has now to uh, revert, uh, the, the, trans the difficulty transfer function will make his block almost worth nothing. So all these, at all the attacker's blocks, these uh, blue boxes that comes after the attack starts, they almost do not contribute to the cumulative difficulty. So the, the attack gets a lot more difficult. So with different parameterizations of the 
number of blocks that will will include in the standard deviation computation. So let's let's go back one minute. So in this formula, there is the standard deviation is computed over a number of blocks, which is k. Um, because this this value can be computed uh, efficiently, like with a sliding window, it, it, you do not need to compute it every time. You can add elements uh, in the, in one extreme and take out elements in the other extreme and keep a rolling computation. This k can be as high as you want. You know, you can have this standard deviation over a uh, hundred blocks, a thousand, ten thousand blocks. It's, it doesn't change uh, the the efficiency of the algorithm. So going back to this point, I tested with two different values of k, and with k equal one day of blocks, then the attacker gets a force delay of 3.4 uh, days. So even if the attacker has the double of the hash rate of an honest chain, still his, his branch will need to go for 3.4 days. And that's more than enough of time to, to you know, to, to do something uh, by the community to prevent this from happening. And if we set K to be 10,000, which it's, I think it's perfectly possible, then the attacker will need 7.3 days uh, until the until the transfer function starts, you know, giving him enough uh, cumulative hash rate, okay? Oh, and this is the finally the insulation attack I told you before. Uh, the insulation attack is different because the attacker tries to pack during insulation a lot more blocks in a in a shorter time, uh, and and because it's the, the, the this we are, we've been I've been talking for too long. I will I just say that we had a rule that makes the node goes into a safe mode if if the if there is a, a compression of blocks if there is a a spike. A very high spike on the on the on, on the density on the difficulty of blocks on the hash rate, so the the node gets into a safe mode. So not even with an insulation attack, there it will be possible to to trick uh, uh, an economic actor such an exchange. So to summarize what we have seen. Strong fork aware merge mining enables increases the security against double spend attack. So it does not increase any other types of security. Like if you want to try to uh, halt the RSK network, like trying to, to force it to a permanent uh, safe mode, then the cost is the same. But one thing is to freeze a network and another completely different thing is to double spend. Double spend is almost the, the dead of the network, I would say, but just, uh, Losing, uh, paying for or for pausing a network or, or for freezing a network, it's just a much lower risk. And uh, fine, we have shown how to, we protect both from revert during confirmation and revert after confirmation attacks. And it only needs, it just needs one thing to miners or eventually any other parties, we could open this to other kinds of parties to inform about these non merge mine blocks these uh, heavy block confirmations. And that's all. Uh, before I get into the questions, uh, I uh, suggest you you uh, go to this uh, fantastic application that uh, Julian has set up for you to vote uh, or uh, and uh, help us improve the quality of the presentation. So please go and uh, I leave, some minutes for you to scan or copy. Uh, Julian probably will send you the link. Yeah, I send it. Okay, so we can switch to uh, to uh, questions. Questions and comments here. Yes, go ahead. Well, when you are talking about blocks with that are uh, BTC blocks with RSK tag, uh, you are talking about BTC blocks that also are in the Bitcoin blockchain. Yes, I'm talking about RSK blocks that because they reached difficulty of Bitcoin block, they are both in, they are in both networks. 
Okay, so, good. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry if I was uh, not very. Uh, no, no. I, I, I have uh, every time I have troubles interpreting text and sentences. But then my comment. Yes. Uh, we have. We already have the 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 headers of the Bitcoin that don't yes. have that 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 are included in the Bitcoin main chain uh, and are, um, and don't have the RSK tag. We have those in the bridge. Yes, yes. The, the only thing is that we could take that information from the bridge. The only thing is that we don't have the proof that they do not have the tag. We only have the headers. Uh, and if you if you think about the header is only 80 bytes uh, and the proof that they do, they do that the tag is not there, it's about 400 bytes. So we only have a very small portion, but anyone could uh, send the remaining part of the of the information yes okay. but, but to me it's important to add confirmation uh, even if it has or not an rsk uh, tag I, I i want to confirm a previous block of btc rsk and if the if the new block that that refers to that block has or not the rsk tag maybe the algorithm could be the same yeah, the, the, the problem the problem is that the block can be confirming a fork, so something that you are you are not seeing. Okay, so this this addition this uh, you see the block header in the bridge, you th you think that is confirming your fork, but maybe it's confirming another fork, because there is some there is uh, some other merge mine tag that you are not aware of, because yeah. you are not running Bitcoin at the same time. Yes, so, that that is my 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 other comment. Could you uh, show the slide with the ye yellow block with green borders? Yeah. Uh, you 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 talked about the forks. Yeah, just one minute. Um, okay, so it was one of the first ones. Yes, um, is this one right? This one. When I, I I saw this slide, yes, I I could maybe I I'm wrong. I could use the yellow green uh, yes. block to confirm the the left block, not only the green block because uh, the, the they are in the same chain. I don't know why don't yes. consider the yellow green block yes. as confirmation to the. Okay orange block you, you you could do that but then you lose the i mean then the the attackers chain will only confirm we also get confirmation from your blocks okay so if you add the fork a hash rate plus the fork b hash rate that will add to more than 100 percent of the bitcoin hash rate because there are some blocks that will be in both chains so you don't get uh i mean you you could do that but it's kind of uh Tricky because it does not uh, it's not conform to the reality. The reality is that you you want a single block to be either confirming one chain or the other, not both of them. But yeah, you could do that. Yes, I I, think, I, I don't understand all the objection, but it's to take yeah, another, another moment. No? Yeah, I, if, I, but uh, I guess that maybe this this way yeah. of doing things could simplify all. Yeah. You don't need exactly to, to know the RSK tag. You you need to confirm um, a block and um, nothing more. Thanks for the clarification. The the other thing is a, a yes. short comment. Uh, I, I don't like the transfer uh, difficulty function. Okay. But uh, it, to be discussed. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, no, not now. No, no. It's only a yes. comment. Yes. It's a it's a, it's very interesting the the difficulty transfer function because. It protects you from attacks where I mean, if you set any hard hard deadline, let's say you can two the the the, the difference between two times some cannot be more than let's say eight hours. You 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 fix that. They say more than eight hours, it's an attack. Okay, but then the attacker can put a single block and pay for that in the middle, like uh, jumping four hours and then another four hours, and with very little effort, it breaks your protection rules. So. By do, doing this continuous, uh, 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 continuous uh, sensing of the of this uh, of the timestamps, you 
uh, you prevent from any kind of tricks to you know to uh, to break your rules. But yes, you, we we will dis discuss this on the the shiny new research forum. So everything that I mentioned uh, after I publish will be will be discussed in the forum. Thanks. Thank to you, Angel. Okay, uh, Sergio. Um, yeah. Good good talk. Um, I have a question about how do you exactly know when the hash rate drop when you get into a safe mode? It's a very important question. Uh, I set this seventy percent threshold uh, because uh i i'm i i analyze a little bit not not with the code but just by watching what happens with the bitcoin difficulty over time and it gets some spikes you know there are some times where you get 10 percent more or 10 percent less in the in the short term uh so i i suppose that it's it, it will not be common for the bitcoin blockchain to drop 30 percent in very short in the very short interval so the ways you can sense the Bitcoin hash rate is either you just uh, keep a rolling uh, a, a, a time window, a rolling time window of the hash rate, let's say for a week, and you just add in one end and take out in the other end. So you had like a, a low, low, low bus uh, filter, uh, low pass filter of the hash rate. Um, you could you can see you can look at the bridge if you look at the bridge you get an estimation of the hash rate so if you don't want to sense that you can also look at the bridge and you get a sense of the hash rate uh you could look at bitcoin and get a sense of the hash rate there are many different ways you can you can do that uh the important thing is that if you enter a uh, safe mode safe mode is temporal safe mode can be uh it's, it's a local decision that you can revert just by it could be reverted just by sending a command to the node i mean let's say that let's say that because of the bitcoin hash rate uh jitter one every six months the node the node enters uh safe mode because it has a false positive right well in that in that uh, moment the uh, the operator can just send a, an rpc command to the node and say okay go back to normal and and nothing happens so yeah, it could any 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 system used to sense the hash rate could have some false positives, but I I don't expect them to be problematic. Okay. Um. Well, I have too much questions, but no, go ahead. Yeah. Um. We I I'll be open to for uh, any time in the week to to talk with that mining team. Uh, this is a proposal. This is not something that is finished. We have to get all the all the stakeholders' opinion about the system. I feel it's it's simple. I, even if it it was difficult for me to explain, I think it's simple. Uh, that's that's a fault of of mine, not a fault of the system. Uh, and uh, and it, it will give you it, it will give us a hundred percent of Bitcoin difficulty, even if something very bad happens to our merge mining. Let's say we we drop the the, the miners and we get to ten percent of the merge mining, then we will still have you know a uh, hundred percent of the cumulative difficulty uh, without attack. And oh, when when there is an attack, we will we will watch the attack ongoing. Okay. Okay. So, any more questions? I think we are we are done. Okay. So, thank you very much to for attending. Thanks, Julian, for uh, as always for preparing this 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 space. And you can you can reach me and send me any question. But I also encourage you to use the research forum recently created for these all these types of uh, interactions and i will do the same okay thank, thank you thank you sergio thanks thanks sergio